Hi guys, thanks for joining me on Making with Marilyn. On today's video, I'm going to show you how to design a very simple pair of earrings in Inkscape. Now Inkscape is a free software that you can download from the internet. I'm going to make my earrings out of this beautiful black and metallic rose gold leather. Since I'm going to be cutting them out with a Glowforge, I will be masking off the front and the back with this masking paper or transfer paper. If you're not using a laser cutter and you're using a Cricut, a Silhouette, or anything else that uses an SVG file, you won't need this. For those of you that need it, I'll link to this product in the description below. Then also in the Glowforge, you have to enter the thickness of your, your material in the settings. And so I'll use these digital calipers, which I will also link to. When it's time to put on my hardware, I have my jump ring opening tool, and then I'll use one or two pair of needle nose pliers. And then last, I have a pair of scissors just to cut my masking paper. Before I get started, I want to send a huge thank you out to Rebecca. I received a notice yesterday from Glowforge that you use my discount link to order your machine. They don't tell me your name other than Rebecca and your last initial or how to get a hold of you to send you a proper thank you. So from the bottom of my heart, thank you. Now I like to use this masking tape. Some people call it transfer tape on leather when I'm cutting out with the Glowforge. Some people do, some people don't. But I think it makes for a cleaner cut and if there's any singe marks, they don't show. So I'm gonna put my masking paper right here. And then on the back side, I'll put some in the same area. I extended it beyond the sides of the leather because I want to have this stick down to the tray in my Glowforge. Now when this is on the bed of my Glowforge, I will be able to see through the tape enough to know where to put my design so that I don't accidentally get into one of the old cutouts. The other thing is, you have to know the thickness of what you're cutting. And so this is my pair of digital calipers I got on Amazon. Again, I will link to these in the description below. But you need to make sure that when they're closed all the way, they're set on zero. If they're not, if there's a number there, you click on this little yellow button that says zero, and it'll zero it out. You just slide them open. And then in an area where you have your tape on the front and the back, you're just going to gently slide those together and then you don't want to press them really, really hard. You want it to be a true measure. These say 0.05. I've had really good luck at cutting this out on a 0.06 setting. So I'll probably go ahead and go with the 0.06 setting again tonight. Now I'm going to go ahead and run downstairs and put this on the bed of the Glowforge so that after I make my design, We'll be ready to cut. I'm in my applications folder, so I'll double click on Inkscape to open it. Now make it bigger. Now this is just a template, and you can set this to whatever size you want. Right now it's set to just a regular size piece of paper, and that helps you understand if you're making a design for a regular size piece of paper, how much room you have left, where to place things on the piece of paper. I really don't pay attention to the template. I want to go ahead and make my screen larger. So I'm going to hold down the shift and click the plus. And there we go. Now my earring is going to be an oval. So I'm going to click on this create circles, ellipses, and arcs. Then I go over here and just drag it to whatever shape I think I want. I can make it really long and skinny, wide and fat, but I think that looks pretty good right there. I'll change it to a prettier color. Then to do anything to manipulate this to see what size it is or resize it, you have to click up here on Select and Transform. So now I can go up here to see the size. Inkscape on my machine defaults to millimeters, so I'll change it to inches. I want my earring to be about 2.25 inches tall. If I change this height right now, because the proportions are unlocked, it's going to stay at the 1.28 wide. 
I want to keep the proportions that I already have, so I'll lock it, and then I'll press 2.25. Now let's go ahead and make it even bigger so we can see it. Now I want to have a cutout of an oval inside. So I can go up here to Edit, Copy, Edit, Paste. Or on a Mac, you could do Command Copy or Command C for Copy, Command B for Paste. Since it's hard to see where the teal is being the same color, I'm going to go ahead and change that to a dark gray. Since the proportions are locked, I can just start dragging it to about the size I think looks good. Now what I'm noticing is, is let's just get rid of this for now. When I drag that in there, this seems a little tall for its width. So I'm going to click on it, unlock the proportions, and I think I'll make it just a little bit shorter. 2.15. Okay, so now I'm going to copy and paste again, and I'll turn that dark gray, make it a lot smaller, kind of drag it up in place where I think it looks good. Now, if you want to, you can just change the size of the inside one. And I want to see what it would look like if I made that a little bit wider. So I'll change that to 0.85. You just kind of play with it until you like it. Okay, I'm happy with that. So I'm going to select both items by dragging my line all the way around them. See how it selects both? I want to center the gray within the teal. So I click on Align and Distribute on this panel, or I can go to Object, Align and Distribute here. I want to make sure that the gray is centered on the vertical axis in the teal, so I'll click on that, and something barely shifted. They're still both selected, so I want to cut the gray out of the teal. By doing that with both things selected, I click on Path and Difference. And there you go. There's our earring. I still need a hole for my jump ring to go through or my fish hook to go through. So I'll click on the little circle thing again. Now, notice it's not circular, so you can click on Control and drag it till it hops to a circle. Or let's get it out of shape. I go to the select function. Now it's selected. I click unlock and I say I want it to be a height of 0.07 and I want it to be the width of 0.07 and that'll get it to the perfect circle. Whoops. <laughs> Let's get back to 07 here. There we go. Don't know what I did wrong there. So I'm going to drag it about to where I want it. The main thing is I need to have it, I'm going to change color so we can see it better. I need to have that close enough to the top that if I don't want to use a jump ring, I can just put a fish hook directly on it. Then once I have it in the up and down position where I want it, I'll select both shapes. I'll go back over to this center on vertical axis. And there we go. Don't even know if it moved. Might have been perfectly placed to begin with. Now, I could cut this out of the teal just like I did this cutout, but I really like to take my earrings into Glowforge, the Glowforge software, in two layers. What I have found is if you take them in in two layers, you can manipulate which layer cuts first. What I have found is cutting the little bitty circle first works better for me. So I take it in as two layers so I can manipulate that. If you go through the same process as we did before, you select both, go to Path and Difference. Now that's going to go in as one layer. If it goes in as one layer, then Glowforge determines what to cut first. The outside, the inside, the circle, it makes that decision for you. So I'm going to go ahead and leave it a different color, which will make sure that it goes in as a separate layer. So we're ready to save this. I'll click File, Save As. I like the plain SVG setting myself. 
I've heard people say that the Inkscape SVG is just fine. And then let's see, let's go to desktop, new earring. Okay, I've saved it. It's going to try to get me to save it again as an Inkscape SVG, but I'm fine with it just being the plain SVG. Okay, so I'm bringing in my design. And there it is. You can see my leather on the bed of my Glowforge. So let me just move this over to where I want it. And then here's the hole in my earring, and here's my earring. The first thing that I need to do is go up to Unknown and say that I'm using uncertified material. And I'm just going to use the setting of 0.06 inches as my thickness. If I click on the hole, I'm going to click on cut, and then it changes it to a cut. See if I click on engrave, it's all grayed out. So I'm going to change it to cut, and then manually set it to 250 for the speed, and then full power. And one setting, or one pass will be fine. So then I go to my earring, Again, change it to cut, and then have my settings at 250 and full power. I want to select my earring, and I'll copy and paste a second earring. Okay, I can barely see it's getting close there, so let me just move both of these over just a little bit. Okay, that looks safe there, so I'll go ahead and click on print. And notice that the whole cut is just going to take 23 seconds. Now, before I go downstairs and watch this cut, I want to tell you, this circle is going to cut first because it's up at the top. If I wanted my circle to cut second, I would actually click on this design and I drag it down and place it down here. It's very simple, but I want my hole to cut first, and so it's in the right place. Okay, it's a little bit loud in here because I have my Glowforge on and my filter, but I'll go ahead and press the blue flashing button and we'll watch it cut. Once the button quits flashing, then it's safe to open the lid. So you can see on the back that it did scorch through to the back paper. That's a good sign. I'll go ahead and take those out. The leather cut all the way through. Some of the paper didn't. Okay, so the leather came off the back paper. We'll go ahead and peel off the front layer of paper. And aren't those beautiful? I'll get some hardware in them and then I'll show you a picture at the end. Thanks so much for joining me. I'm Marilyn. Bye-bye.